Hey guys, welcome back to another Genshin Impact video and today's going to be a guide one and the first one I'm doing in a long time. So if it's a little sporadic or if it's a bit unorganized, I do apologize for that. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the best way for you to upgrade characters, just in a general sense. Uh, I know there's a lot of guide videos out there already, but I wanted to make a few for my channel since I have done some in the past before I switched to League. And one of the things I never covered was how to efficiently get your characters up to where you want them to be if you ever want to do Spiral Abyss, if you ever want to just complete the story mode or take down all the bosses in a very easy way. Naturally, of course, Genshin is a single player game, so there really is no such thing as a meta. If your characters can do Spiral Abyss without any trouble, if you can complete the story, if you can take down all the content, then it doesn't matter how efficiently or how optimally you geared them or progress them. But a lot of people do care about how to manage their resources, especially in light of resin not being a very plentiful resource, and so that's what this video is going to be. Now, it largely depends on a few factors. For one, even though there are designated classes, such as there's main DPS, then you got secondary DPS, then you have um, like your support units, there's still a bit of nuance in between each character. Like some of them, they have a they place a greater emphasis on a specific substat that you want to go for in an artifact more than they do talents or constellation. Others are very weak without their constellations and very strong with them, and vice versa. Others just don't care about the constellations. So I will be as general as possible, but there will be some more ancillary research you're gonna have to do for a specific character. Let's start first by assuming you're starting from scratch, as if you were making a brand new comp, if you were just starting out fresh from the game, if you're wherever you are in that position. So I'm going to go ahead and construct just a team. Actually, we can use this one for the time being. Um, of course, five-star units generally are not available to you. A lot of these are pertaining to event banners. The only ones that you can get consistently, regardless of what time of the year it is, is Kutin, Chichi, Mona, Jean, and Dilu. Alright, so for Diluc, we're going to use him as our example then. Main DPS, focus on them first, they'll be carrying all the weight for your team, they're doing all the damage, they're going to be your main primary source of, I guess, the character that's just going to be on the field the most often. Uh, so the way I like to order my, I guess, checklist of what you want to do, the first thing you always want to prioritize, at least for me, is level. Get them to as high a level as possible, level 90 is the cap. Ascend them all the way, just focus on devoting all of your resin into getting their ascension materials, because most DPS units, he's level 90, so I'm going to use Eula as an example. Um, when you ascend them, they have a personal stat attached to them. It could be crit damage, it could be hydro damage, pyro damage, energy recharge, what have you. Most of them have percent attack, crit rate, crit damage, one of those offensive stats that you really want to make sure that you get maxed out. So for Eula, actually because I can ascend her right now, let me go ahead and craft a... Uh, just craft a material for her. Okay. So when you ascend them, notice how it doesn't improve at all. However, when you go up in terms of level and character experience, then you do see an increase in that specific stat. So I'm going to go to level 70. And then you'll see right here, when you ascend from 70 to 80 or more important parts, especially in the late game, they get a huge boost in their personal stat. And you definitely want to grab that because that is a promised bonus. And by promised bonus, I mean when it comes to other RNG elements like artifacts, you're going to be spending inane amounts of resin just to get a decent artifact. And for some people, they might be super lucky and get it right away. For others, they're going to take 40 years to get them and it's just going to be a waste of time. So levels are the best way to go first if you're prioritizing on your main DPS. Then after that, you want to go for the weapon. Weapons can be tricky because naturally not everyone can afford uh, the rare 5-star weapons. It's already hard enough to afford the 5-star characters for free-to-play players. But I would still say even if you're using a placeholder weapon like for Diluc if you're using the prototype Archaic, you still want to get this to as high a level as possible because it is a guaranteed stat, it's a guaranteed bonus. So. For your weapon forging materials, of course, you can use your enhancement ores or whatever you have on the side, and just get that going as quickly as possible. I put a lot more focus on getting the level and the weapon for the main DPS because those are the stats that synergize the best with dealing damage, right? Afterwards, I already explained earlier that artifacts can be pretty fickle and not always give you the results that you want. So what I like to do is I usually go for placeholder stuff, 
And by placeholder stuff, I mean, you want to get the correct main stat, of course, and at least two good substats with decent numbers on them. For example, crit damage above 18%, crit rate above 10%, something like this is passable. It's not perfect, there's probably a lot better artifacts out there, but at least for the time being, you'll be able to do pretty much all the content that you want with that, so you don't have to put that much focus into it. Later, you can min-max after you run through all your bases. Another example would be, let's say, this flower, or this feather. This feather is not bad, it could be do it could be a little bit better, but it's still serviceable. Same for this hourglass. This one I think is pretty good. But again, that's sort of the basic principle. Doesn't matter if you have, let's say, a dead stat for that character, it's fine. If you can get 2 out of 4, 3 out of 4, then you'll be fine. So, of course, each character needs their own respective main stat. Some characters would want crit damage, some characters would want HP, what have you. So again, you'll have to do a bit of extraneous research for each individual character, but that's how it would go for in terms of just general prioritization. After you get your placeholder artifacts, you're gonna be stuck on this for a very long time. Talents. Talents is, in my opinion, far more important than artifacts because, once again, talents are guaranteed in that they're not bound to RNG, you're not gonna be unlucky and get a bad roll or a good roll, so, talent materials function almost exactly the same way as weapon materials and character experience. Just go to the domain whenever it's available, uh, Tuesday or Friday, Monday or Wednesday, I think... No, Tuesday, Friday, Monday, Thursday, or Wednesday and Saturday. On Sunday, you have access to all of them. You get to choose specifically which one you want to go for. So, if you want to save up your condensed resin, a lot of people, what they like to do is they pile their resin into condensed forms, which I need to do right here. They get this, it only costs a crystal core, there's a bunch of crystal flies everywhere on the map, and that way, if you're waiting for a specific day, you can stockpile a lot more resin than you normally would, because of course the cap for resin is 160. Of course, when it comes to talent materials, once you get level 9, to get to level 10 you're going to need crowns of insight, which are only available through events. However, if you get everything to level 9, it should be fine. And for most DPS units, they do want to have all their skills level 9. I can't think of that many that don't. I think Ganyu is the only one where it doesn't really matter if you have um, her E, which is just the target dummy. I don't put that many points into it because if you look at the attributes, it's not all that important. They mostly use it just for crowd control. So for her, you focus on your main attack and then of course your ultimate. For other characters like Hu Tao, there's a huge emphasis placed on her elemental skill. As you can see here, it boosts her attack equal to her maximum HP, so for her, it is definitely very important. But ultimately, you do want to prioritize every single offensive stat, or every single activatable skill, since it's your main DPS. And then, after you're done with that, most of the time, your pads are split into different ways. We're assuming you're started out just fresh, you have a brand new comp, and all of your units are weak. So I would actually not go back into artifacts, again, they're placeholders, instead focus on your next support unit, because once you get your support units improved, then you can really start to start one-shotting bosses, you can get all those fancy combinations, do 300,000 damage in one hit. So with Hu Tao, or let's say with D Luke, because again, I'm trying to keep focus on uh, non-time limited units, let's say we're going to go for Mona. Where is she? There she is. Okay, support units are a little bit different. You still sort of want to follow the same basic principle with them as you would for your main DPS, but because they're support units, you don't need to care too much about allocating all that many resources, just enough to make it so that you can do their job efficiently, quickly, and as frequently as possible. And what I mean by that is, notice here Mona is level 70. Getting her up to level 90 is definitely an option, because as you see here, she has energy recharge for her personal stat, and the more energy recharge means the more spammable your ultimate is, or your elemental burst, my bad. Uh, so that is an option. However, energy recharge is not as crucial for a character as the likes of crit damage or crit rate, especially since for most instances, a decent amount of energy recharge would be enough to get their ultimate back up whenever you need it the most. Same goes to their weapon. I don't really see any particular reason to go higher than level 70 for most characters. Mona, of course, is sort of an exception as, in her case, she does do a very significant amount of damage with the right equipment. But if we were to look at someone like, let's say, Xingqiu, he's not going to be doing that much damage. You can give him more damage if you want to, but my Xingqiu is primarily just there to be um, a vaporize bot. So I don't really care about his crit rate, his crit damage. I do still have a few of his artifacts and crit damage, but that's just because I was min-maxing. Um, I put a little bit more emphasis on that. 
but for them, the weapon doesn't need to go beyond a certain level. The only one would be Bennett, mostly just because his talent, and if you guys know already, Bennett is the best support unit in the game by far. You can give a crazy amount of attack as you can see here, um, if I were to give you the info. It gives him attack for his entire party equal to a percentage of his maximum HP. Where is it? Oh, my bad. It's not max HP. That's the healing. Uh, the attack bonus is based off of his base attack. And in that case, his weapon actually does matter because weapons count towards base attack. Whereas attack from, let's say, a feather is bonus attack. Once again, I'm sorry that there's a whole bunch of different exceptions. Every character is different in their own way. But I'm just using this as a general rule of thumb. Weapons, you don't need to go very far on supports. 70, 60 even is okay. If you have the money and the wherewithal to do so, if you're not a free-to-play player, if you have a bit more, like if you want to just bust out the old Benjamins and get the resin refreshes, then of course you can spend a little bit more money to work on this. Same goes for artifacts. For the likes of a support unit, again, Xingqiu, I don't need to really care too much about things like crit damage. I mostly go for energy recharge. We have energy recharge here, energy recharge there, uh, elemental mastery, energy recharge main. Um, just things that make it easier for them to do their job. Crit damage and crit rate are difficult to come by because you have to be lucky to get both of them on a single artifact and you have to be lucky enough to get enough rolls to improve their substats. So it's like RNG on top of RNG. I don't put that much stock into it, mostly just because while their damage can matter if you're trying to squeeze out every possible bit of DPS you can get, Genshin is a very forgiving game. Even Spiral Abyss, the later floors, you don't need to have the super best characters ever with the most stacked equipment. People have done video runs of them soloing the last floor with a single character or just two characters. Some have done it with the intro characters, which are Amber, Kaya, Lisa, and... I think that's it. And of course, Traveler. So. You don't need to go that hard on it, you don't have to worry about it that much, which is why I said before, placeholder artifacts will do you just fine. Talents are very specific for each character. Most of the time, support units don't need their main attack because they're not doing any damage. They do need their elemental skill or their burst. In the case of Bennett, Passion Overload is specifically there just to generate him energy. So none of these things will really matter all that much unless you're going for a huge elemental reaction comp. So the only thing he needs to work on is Fantastic Voyage. For Xingqiu, he needs both Rain Screen, I believe, because it has the damage reduction for the shield, and then Rain Cutter, because that gives him the bonus damage on Sword Rain. Likewise, if you go to, let's say, Zhongli, his shield, or the hold form of his E, is important to level up because it increases the base shield, and of course, the uh, additional shield absorption based on his maximum health. And then his ultimate is a giant meteor. Now, technically, because this does a crazy amount of damage, I do actually consider working on his weapons. But again, you probably won't be having him unless you were already pulling him before. If you're watching this video, there's a high chance that you're new to the game or relatively new to the game and wondering how you want to go about improving your characters. So likely you will not have him. So I would recommend for your support units to look at what their abilities do uh, in application. If you have a hard time understanding them, you can always just go on the forums. There's a ton of reddits for each. I believe there's a reddit for every single character. Uh, Discord server is also very helpful. You can go to my Discord or the main Discord. And there's also a whole bunch of guides on websites out there. I'll post a link in the description for you guys, or a couple links if you want to reference them. And that way you can save your materials because talents are exorbitantly expensive. Even for low uh, rarity units like 4 stars, to get from level 9 to 10 it costs 700,000 mora. Which, yeah, but it is worth it because talents, in my opinion, give more benefit than artifacts ever will. So that's why you want to focus on talents before artifacts, because artifacts you can get RNG screwed and be stuck on a character for weeks, even months. With talents, if you spend all of your resources, all of your resin, if you dedicate it to collecting the Mora from the Leyline Outcrops over here, you can get your Mora from here, and you can get your experience materials from here. You can get your character's level, the weapon level, and their talents up. I would say if I were to focus on a single character, I can do it in about two weeks. Maybe a little bit longer. This is sort of a long-term progression, not necessarily short-term progression. As opposed to artifacts, where for some characters I've been working on them for months. 
That's mostly how you go about upgrading your characters. You want to prioritize the things that give you guaranteed results where it's just a matter of time, not necessarily luck. Focus on level, then their weapon, then placeholder artifacts, enough to just make them serviceable, then max out talents. That would be for the main DPS, and then for supports. The same structure where you want to focus on level, you don't have to get them that far because they don't need it as much. Uh, same for weapons. Get it to a point where it's a decent amount of attack and a decent amount of their supporter stat. And then of course when it comes to talents, each support unit, Bennett, Xingqiu, Sucrose, Xiangling, Mona, Chi Chi, just any of them, uh, it's a case by case basis. Okay so that's gonna be it, I don't want to go too long because this is usually why I script my videos, if I did it on the fly I'd be rambling non-stop and I would be going off topic in so many ways. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, a rating would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget to leave any feedback if you think this is a good video and I should continue making more like this, or if you think this kind of content is not really your thing, then please tell me that as well. Aside from that, follow me on my socials, join my Discord server. Uh, we have a small Genshin community, a decent sized one. I know I'm mostly League of Legends, but I do have a section down there too. And check out my other Genshin content, either on this channel, you're watching on Vars 2, on my main channel I have a couple of Genshin videos still there too. But that's gonna be it, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.